Hello and welcome to NRH Blue Devils Soccer. I'm Jackson Corcoran here alongside me is Drew Moreland. On a windy afternoon here at Maplewood Richmond Heights High School, the Blue Devils coming into this contest at 5-11 and run into the 11-3 Collegiate Owls. The Owls are red hot winning their last four while the Blue Devils came up short against Valley Park last night. We talked to Collegiate's coach prior to the game, so Drew, why don't you give us a quick rundown on, Val or on uh, the Collegiate Owls. All right, Collegiate's had a pretty good season so far. They have played some not-so-great schools um, and really blown them out, but they have had some struggles, especially against Villa Duchesne. And MRH has also had a pretty decent season, so we'll have to see how this game goes with kickoff. Steve Wangia plays it backwards. Pressure from Duggan. She wins the ball, but it'll head back to the Collegiate back line. Played into touch by number 14, Amelia Smith. Corcoran throws it in down the line. Munn chasing. Ball's played backwards. Wamhoff clears. The Owls look to push forward, but a stop by Armstrong. He'll send it back in. Thank you. Number 23, Wiss. It's poked away by Corcoran. Corcoran and Munn chasing. Cleared by Rannon Steele. Corcoran starting at right wing will throw in. In case you missed the Blue Devils starting lineup, we have uh, Addie Nevins in goal, Catherine Barron sweeping, Mariah Davis stopping, Lexi Brooks on le at left back, Olivia Armstrong right back. Uh, we have Meg Hofer in the middle, Katie Corcoran on the right wing, Ellen Powell on the left, and playing for Marley Duggan, Jaleese Wilson, and Anna Munn Karstensen. Ball kicked out of play by the Blue Devils, and Collegiate Isles will have their first throw in of the game. Steal to throw. Sends it up field. Ball sent in. Catherine Barron will send it downfield. Anamun chasing. The owl's clear. Sent down. Barron has plenty of time and space. Tries to find Duggan but can't. It's picked off. Wangi will send it down into the corner. And Secret Yudego loses the ball. That'll be a Blue Devils throw. You can jump in wherever since there's, like, since there's so much more time in soccer. You can jump in there. Sent down the line by Lily Wamhoff. That'll go out of bounds. Another Blue Devils throw. Drew, that's been characteristic of a lot of Blue Devils games this year. Uh, opponents sending the ball downfield and out of touch without trying to build up a lot against the stout Blue Devils back line. That'll be Avery Vance to throw. Flicked on into the middle. Davis battling center midfield for the Owls for the ball. Here's Wangia. Taken away, and here's Brooks. Tries to send Duggan, but can't. Radichari with the ball in the middle. Lays it off for Haley Millett. We'll send it down the line for Yudego. Can't come up with it. That is a goal kick, the first of the game. Addie Nevins will send that one out. Nevin sets the ball up on the near side. Right foot a kick stays low, but finds Ellen Powell on the left wing. Powell looking to turn against Idego. Ball gets out of bounds. Duggan can't keep it in, and that'll be Vance to throw to Idego. Taken away by Brooks. Now send here's here's Duggan with speed. She's ahead. She's got Munn and Carson's in the middle. She'll send her. But that is picked up and cleared by Amelia Smith. Meg Hofer pokes it away. That'll be a throw in for the Owls. 
First counterattack of the day for the Blue Devils. Nothing comes of it. Vance throws in. Picked off by Brooks. Mon Carsonson made a run, but Brooks couldn't get the ball off to her. Chipped away by Davis, but that'll get out of bounds. Yet another throw. Powell too eager for the throw, and that is Collegiate Owls' ball. Here's Vance. Tries to find Udego. That will roll slowly out of bounds. Another Owls' throw. Brooks and Udego battle it out. That ends up on the foot of Whamhoff, who will send it downfield out of bounds. Left back Kayla Brooks will throw in, looking to find Duggan. She can't. Here's Radachari, dribbling, taking space, tries to switch fields. Picked off by Corcoran, sends it in the middle, cleared away. Coming on to the ball is Chloe Roy, sent into the corner. Barron looking to deal with it. It's taken off her foot by Lund Linden. But Barron wins it back. She'll clear down the line. Here's Wilson. Beats her, oh, beats her man, but it goes out of bounds. What do you call it? Does it say beat her man still? Matter. Does it matter? Uh, Millet looking to switch fields, but Duggan picks it off. It ends up back to Amelia Smith, who will send it wide. Now back into the middle. Finds Millet. Picked off by Meg Hofer. We'll try and send Wilson, blocked by Smith. Smith has it. Wilson, good pressure, wins the ball. But Munn Carsonson loses it, and it's out of bounds. But off a collegiate player, that'll be a Blue Devils throw, which Olivia Armstrong will take. Armstrong on the field looking for options. We have our first substitution of the game. That'll be Lexi Brooks coming in for Marley, or not Marley, uh, yes, Marley Duggan. But Brooks will take the right wing and move Jaleese Wilson over to the left. Armstrong steps in, clears. Brooks sends it in the middle, picked off by Vance. Here's Whamhoff being chased by Wilson. Wilson has her beat for speed, but it's off her foot and out of bounds. Wemhoff. Can't find Udego. But Vance steps in and will clear. One gear pressing Brooks. Here's Radachari. Radachari off the ball by Mun Carsonson, who will send it wide to Wilson. Wilson can't control it out of bounds. Another throw. Not a lot of momentum either way thus far, Drew. Yeah, absolutely. This has definitely been a pretty 50-50 game so far. The wind is definitely going to be a big factor with first touches being affected as we've seen so far, so we'll have to see how it plays out. Another throw. That'll be Kayla Brooks. Sends it, and Wilson will chase. That'll be Whamhoff coming up with the ball. And she clears. It's into touch once more. Another Blue Devils throw. Ellen Powell, short throw in the middle to for Hofer. Hofer looking for options, but it's taken off her foot, and Millet will clear. Longhi looking to win the ball out of the air, but can't. Sent in by Brooks. Cleared away, thumping clearance by number seven, um, Lily Wamhoff, and now chasing the ball is Chloe Roy. Roy beats Armstrong, puts it on goal, but it is no challenge for the keeper. Adeline Nevins makes her first save of the game, and it was quite simple. Nevins, right booted clearance, soars through the air, ends up just past midfield off the foot of uh, Amelia Smith, and Wilson wins the ball. She's got an inside track on goal. Number six, Julius Wilson shooting just over. First real chance for either side. Great run from Julius Wilson, but couldn't finish.
Drew, I think that's going to gonna have to be how the Blue Devils make their offense today. Uh, the Owls' back line has looked pretty solid so far. They're going to have to use their speed up front through Wilson and Brooks to score a few goals. Yeah, absolutely. MRH has been very deadly on the wings this season with some really fast players like Lexi Brooks and obviously Jaleese Wilson. So if they can keep up this pressure just like Jaleese Wilson put on, we can absolutely see an MRH win. Here is Avery Vance for the Owls. Right back will throw it in. Finds Wingia. Send it back to Vradachari, but it's picked off by Munn Carstensen. Wilson can't keep it in. Rolls just to the right of her. And it'll be advanced to throw once again. Wangia, defended by Brooks, is sent in. Here's Mariah Davis. Chest it down. And Powell. Miscommunication between uh, Kayla Brooks and Ellen Powell led to the ball rolling slowly into touch. I will throw in off the head of Brooks. Not at on by Secret Yudo, uh, Yadego. Ball bounces off Baron. Yadego is in. Shooting, rolls wide. A lucky bounce for the Collegiate Owls. They couldn't make the most of it. Secret Yadego sent in that guilt edge chance, uh, but she rolls it wide. That first and best chance for the Owls so far, but we're still 0-0 just over 10 minutes in. Nevins, her second goal kick, once again setting up from the near side. Sends it low once again. Ellen Powell comes up with it. Yadego on her back. Yudego comes up with the ball, but Meg Hofer takes it away nicely. Everardichari wins it off. Hofer's foot sends it in. Barron sends it. Flicked on by Munn Carsonson, and here's Wilson. Wilson's got speed. She's heading on the left wing, tries to flick it back towards the middle, but can't. Picked off by Wemhoff, and Wemhoff looking to dribble through, and she clears it up to uh, Millet. Millet sends wide to Yudego. Can't bring it down, and that is a throw for the Blue Devils. Powell in the middle for Car Mon Carstensen. She'll send it wide for Wilson. Wilson looking for options here. Good hard step by Wamhoff. Clears the ball. That'll be a Blue Devils throw near midfield. The action on both ends has been mostly on the near wing thus far with uh, attacking options for the Blue Devils. Been through left winger Jaleese Wilson. And for the Owls, it's been through right winger Secret Yudego. That'll be a collegiate goal kick. And instead of the keeper, it will be Lily Wamhoff taking the kick. And we have our first collegiate substitution, I believe. That'll be Avery Vance coming out and Chloe Botts coming in to play right back. Wamhoff floating backspin kick, won by Botts, her first action of the game. Brooks flicks it in for Wilson. Wilson chests it down into the middle for Lexi Brooks. Can't win it. Cleared by Radachari. Here's Hofer. Send it into the box, and it rolls harmlessly by Dacia Shanks. And it will be Lily Wamhoff taking the kick from the far side. Surveying the field, winds up, kicks, it's low. Rolls by Brooks, and that's Linden taking it down the left wing. Linden looking to beat Corcoran for pace, she has. And she's taking it down, long legged strides, taking it near the 18 yard box. She's looking for options in the middle. She'll cross it, poked away by, oh, but it's poorly set in the middle. Cleared away. Unlucky bounce for the Blue Devils, but it's cleared smartly by, I believe that was uh, Mariah Davis. <coughs> now Hofer looking to counterattack here. Sends it, stopped by Smith. Smith finds Botts, will send out the wing for Yudego. Picked off by Powell. Good read there. She'll send it in the middle for Hofer. Can't win it. Millet flicks it out wide for Yudego. Good tackle from Powell. Ends up with a foot of Botts who will send it back to Yudego. On the wing, here's Wilson. Wilson taking on Wamhoff. She's got one to beat. She does. She's in the middle once again. Flicks it in the middle for Carsonson. But Carsonson is one off the ball by Amelia Smith. And that'll go out for a throw. Wilson's speed has been the main driver of Blue Devil attack thus far today, whatever wing she's been on. And that is sent in for Hofer. Hofer swings it in, rolls wide. Yeah. 
Through the Maple Ridge Nice Blue Devils are 5 and 11 on the season, but in my opinion, that record is slightly misleading. They've been playing a pretty tough schedule, especially when compared to a lot of the teams uh, in this area. Absolutely. Past two weeks have been full of games, and MRH's fitness is really showing with Jaleese Wilson, especially, still showing that speed after so many games in the last two weeks. Here's our swap sweeper, Baron, who will send it down. Wamhoff off the shin, out of play. Kayla Brooks, number 10. White sleeves throws it in. Let's find Wilson. It's off a leg of Botts. We'll flick in the middle for Millet. Sends it up. Confusion comes down and is tapped away by Brooks. Last ditch effort. Gets out of bounds and the Owls will have to restart. We're almost halfway through the first half here. It's a 0 0 ball game. Uh, neither goalkeeper has really been tested. We've only, we only had one shot on goal, and that was a uh, rolling effort that was easily saved by Nevins. Shanks hasn't had to make a save yet, despite a couple of chances from the Blue Devils. Shots have been sent wide. Here's Barron. They're facing goal. Taps it back to Powell, who'll try and clear. Radichari steps in the way. Radichari sends it. Nicely played away by Olivia Armstrong. Finds Lexi Brooks. Radichari didn't let her get any space. Brooks sends it off her. That is a, another Blue Devil throw. Brooks looking left and right. Sends it up the line for her sister. Lexi comes down with it, and she'll send it in the middle. Amelia Smith. It's blocked by Munn. Wilson battling for it, but Smith comes up. She's got space. She'll send it wide for number two, Viviette Linden. Linden will take it down the wing. Linden's got Corcoran on her tail. Sends it. Brought down nicely by Barron, but Wengia comes up with the ball. Here's Kayla Brooks. She's got Wengia pressing. Can't clear. Tidego. Now it's cleared. And Millet sends it backwards to Smith. who will send it in past Davis onto the foot of Barron. We'll find her co-captain, Olivia Armstrong, sends it wide. Ends up on the foot of Hofer, who will roll it to Brooks. Picked off by Rodachari. Rodachari can't beat Davis, strong tackle, and Davis has options. Sends it, it's up for Wilson. Wilson pressing Smith. Smith will pass it wide to Linden. Linden beats Corcoran. She's got pace and she's dribbling down the field. Now passes in the middle, cross field pass, picked off by Ellen Powell. Powell tries to find Brooks, but it's picked off by Wamhoff. Sends a high spinning ball in the air, brought down by Powell. But Yadego wins it off her, beats Powell off the dribble. She's got to beat Barron. She can't. Stop defending by Catherine Barron, the sweeper, who will dribble past, send the ball upfield. Wamhoff brings it down. She's got Munn on her back. Passes to Smith, who will clear. Finds Viratachari, flicked on, Davis. Wamhoff picks it up. They're back to the field. He's got Mon Carson's on her. Just gets it past, past Lexi Brooks there. Here's Davis. Viratachari wins the ball, and Millet sends. Barron pokes it away, will look to keep it in. Does so. Just send it down the wing for Brooks. Swung on a miss, and here's Lexi Brooks. She's coming down the left wing once again. Dribbles in, cuts inside. She's got Wilson shooting just wide. Took that ball in at a tight angle. Tried a left-footed shot to bring it across the face of goal. Could not connect cleanly, and it goes just wide. And we have a substitution on the right wing for the Blue Devils. That will be Katie Corcoran coming off for freshman Zahava Kiernan. They've switched kick takers. Now Amelia Smith will send it away. Number 14, Amelia Smith, a freshman. He's played a pretty solid game in the back so far. Right foot kick from the far side. It's got some air. Rolls by Munn. Picked off by Kiernan. 
Lund tries to flick it on, but sends it backwards. Here's Linden. Kept in by Brooks. Now sent away. Barron steps into the empty space, and she'll dribble for a little bit. Taken to the left wing, sends it to no one, and it'll roll out of bounds for a collegiate kick. Shanks still yet to make a save in this one, despite the 0-0 score. And still, Addie Nevins sitting on just one. Whamhoff from the near side sends it. Picked off by Brooks. It's in the middle. Whamhoff runs through. And it's cleared away. Now Sifu Wangia. She's got pace and she's taking on Kayla Brooks. Pitched battle on the far side. Wangia comes up with it and will send it into the middle. Mag Hofer wins it but sends it right to Secret Idego, who tries to play it down the middle but is picked off by Catherine Barron. Here's Vradachari. Flicked on. Here's Yadego. She's got space. Barron steps out. Top defending. Pull back. And she clears. But it ends up with the foot of Varadachari at the edge of the box. At the edge of, edge of, the, edge of the 18. Here's Yadego crossing in. Blocked by Hofer. Ball stays in play. Barron looking to clear. Off the foot of Yadego. That'll be a blue throw. Scary moment for the Blue Devils, but it is, in the end, safely cleared. But they'll do it all again with a throw in. Here's Botts. Botts the right back, stepping up. They might look for a long throw here. Sent in, brought down by Barron. Powell looks to clear. It's on the foot of Hofer. Nice move. And she'll send it for Brooks. Brooks has just Smith to beat. With Wamhoff coming hard on her back. She takes it down the left wing. She's got Jalise Wilson in the middle. Crossed in. It's behind, and it is cleared away by Collegiate. Kiernan chasing now on the right wing. Kiernan sends it down line for Wilson, but it is picked off by Kelly. By the way, some substitutions I believe we missed. We have Kelly in for Steele for Collegiate, and we have Lydia Sabbath in for Mariah Davis for the Blue Devils. And here's Kayla Brooks. Has to clear, rolls out of bounds. You can talk whenever you want, man. Ball control has definitely been one of the Blue Devils' biggest challenges so far, and with this weather, they really have to keep their composure if they want to win this game. We've definitely been seeing some rough first touches from both teams, but one team has really got to capitalize on these chances. And now a battle picked up by the collegiate goalkeeper, and MRH will regroup. Jackson, any thoughts on the game so far? Well, it's been a defensive battle, which has been typical for most of the Blue Devils games this season. Uh, they've allowed, they've allowed, uh, I believe, less than a goal in their conference games, and under two and a half goals per game all season. Uh, they have a very, they're a very strong defensive side, but sometimes lack in scoring depth. Uh, Lexi Brooks has, I believe, six goals in the year, but there's not much in the way of scoring besides that. They have a, a lot of playmakers, but not a lot of pure finishers uh, on the top line. Now Jalise Wilson, looking for ball, she'll send it down, but that'll head out of bounds. Uh, we had a gust of wind blowing some things around in the broadcast booth, and that's definitely affecting the players out there today. Uh, it's, it's tough to send a long ball when you've got wind swirling like this, isn't it, Drew? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We've seen some weird bounces, up, especially up near the 18 on both sides. And luckily for both teams, it's been a very solid defensive game. So any of these lucky bounces could lead to a random goal. So we'll have to see what happens. We certainly will. And as we see another substitute, another two substitutions, uh, Marley Duggan coming into play center forward and Katie Corcoran coming to the left wing. Here's Lydia Sabbath, now Hofer, 
Hofer sends it down the wing. Wilson chasing. Smith will beat her to it. Duggan with the pressure. Forces a clear by Wilson. Well done by Duggan. We're seeing some serious intensity up on the forward for both teams, especially from Yadego using her physicality and Wilson and Brooks using their speed to their advantages. We'd definitely like to see some more creativity in the midfield as it has been a lot of 50-50 battles, and obviously the midfield can really determine a game. Absolutely. The Blue Devils are at their best when they're using their forwards to pressure, um, especially with Wilson and Brooks' speed. They can put a lot of pressure on a team just by coming in when they have their back turned. Now here's Bots who will clear. Millet facing up, here's Udego. Stepped, step in by Corcoran, but it's cleared again. Now here's Millet. Millet looks to be through, but Olivia Armstrong did a good job defending. Pass it off to her co-captain, Catherine Barron, who clears to Lexi Brooks. But Bots got a foot in and didn't let Brooks initiate any hold-up play. Armstrong sends. Corcoran tried to flick on but couldn't. Corcoran finds Brooks. Here's Hofer. Hofer beats Radachari and she'll send Brooks. Brooks has some space but Smith is charging in. Brooks wins the ball. She's cutting inside. She's got options in the middle. Crosses. Oh, and it's cleared wide by Kelly. Amelia Smith from Collegiate really has some speed, but she's no match for Wilson and Brooks with immense amounts of pace, and these opportunities just keep coming from MRH. Sooner or later, we're going to see someone capitalize. At a battle in the middle with Duggan and Kelly there. Kelly came out on top, but that was a very nice move. Uh, Brooks, uh, like Drew said, is always going to win out for pace and a nice cross into the middle. That's brought down by Corcoran, but it ends up on the foot of Botts. Chloe Botts sends it down the line, floats harmlessly out of bounds, and it'll be a throw-in for left back Olivia Armstrong. Armstrong claps the ball, sends it into Corcoran. Corcoran brings it down, sends it in the middle for Sabbath. Now Kayla Brooks, nice touch, and she'll send in Wilson, but it's stepped by Chloe Kelly, <laughs> or Gamila Kelly, I'm sorry. Um, cleared up. Wangia can't win it away from Kayla Brooks. Here's Wamhoff. Keeps it away from Sabbath and Duggan, and Wamhoff looks to send it. Corcoran, she's got two on her. Can't come up with it, and it'll be secret Udego. Oh, and the call is out of bounds, but I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, that was a tough one, but this ref, he's very seasoned. I've seen this guy for years, so I say we should probably trust him on that. I recognize both these reps from the fall boys soccer season. Uh, they usually do a good job. And we, we haven't had a very physical game this, to, uh, this day so far. In fact, I don't think we have a, we've had a single foul call, have we, Drew? No, not at all. This has been a, a stark contrast from Bayless, their last home game last week. There were so many fouls, a very rough game with emotions running high. This game has seemed to be very clean with a lot of um, emphasis on the ball rather than each other. Yeah, for sure. There's, there's always a lot of contrast between conference and non-conference games, but here's Wangia shooting, rolls on goal. That is the first goal of the game, one nothing Collegiate. And the Collegiate Owls' leading scorer strikes again, C4 Wangia, her 17th on the season. Speed has definitely been the story of this game so far. Um, Brooks and Wingia, as we've just seen with the pace, are really determining, determining this game right now. And the defense have no answers to this, so we definitely need to see some tactics from Coach Amber Jordan if they want to make this go up. Hofer sends it down. Corkin ends up with it on the left wing, but it's poked away by Bots. That's a tough first goal to concede, because the Blue Devils are right back down on the collegiate end looking to make something happen. Shanks picks up the flick from Brooks with no danger. Shanks waving her team up the pitch. And the collegiate goalkeeper, number one, senior will look to send the ball up. Hofer can't bring it down. Wungi looking to play Linden. Linden is pressured by Kiernan. 
wins the ball, send it up to Millet. Good step from Armstrong. Now here's Duggan, but it's cleared away. Here's Yadego. Katie can't win the ball off her, but it's sent down. Here's Barron, steps up, she'll dribble. Can't find anyone with the pass. Smith probably had more time than she thought there, and she just sends it in the touch instead of finding a teammate. Starting to see some maestro work from MRH. We're seeing Catherine Barron, the center back, bringing the ball up a lot. Katie Corcoran on the wing and Meg Hofer in the center. I really started to make some passes, and it's something we like to see. For sure, the skill of uh, Maplewood, is, even in the back line, is definitely there. Uh, just sometimes just lacks that finishing touch. Uh, they've, they've, they've got the ball into scoring positions a lot this game and this year, but just haven't been able to finish. Duggan tries to pressure, but well done by Smith to clear. And it's sent in by Armstrong, but just too far. Shanks will come up with it. Good thought from Armstrong with the swirling winds, sending a ball downfield and seeing what happens. This isn't always the worst strategy. Here's Kiernan. And we've see, we see already Catherine Barron moving up. She can be a real threat on the offensive end, uh, despite her skill on the defensive end as well. And we see her with the ball right now, heading into the 18. Tries to cut through two collegiate players, but here's Duggan. Off the byline, crosses it in. Stopped by Shanks. And we see the impact that Catherine Barron can have on the offensive end. She is, despite her jo uh, typical job as Blue Devil sweeper, she's one of the Blue Devil's more prolific offensive players. She's got a great touch, great vision, especially when it comes to the 18-yard box. And we saw that there, playing Duggan to the byline for a cross attempt. Now Barron, she'll just turn and shoot with the left foot. Rolls through. They say Shanks did not touch. That'll be a goal kick. With only a quarter of the half left so far, we've got Collegiate Owls up one with MRH zero goals. Uh, I don't think the scoreboard really tells all the game. This has been a very close game so far, and this game could be either way right now. <laughs> Smith sends it upfield. Lexi Brooks tries to bring it down. Flicks it on. Here's Katie Corcoran. Corcoran turning. Sends it back to Brooks. Brooks in the middle. Here's Davis. Winds up shooting. Left foot a shot. It's up. It's just over. Oh, a beautiful piece of play from the Blue Devils. Well worked. A great attempt. Set up the shot at the top of the box, but couldn't convert. Mariah Davis, the freshman, this is her first season as a Blue Devil, and the confidence to take a shot like that and the precision that shot had, that was a great effort by her, and let's hope to see some more. Brilliant bit of soccer there, just couldn't come up with it. About as close as you can get on that shot from Davis, to the left foot, a curling effort, sailing just over the bar. Far side referee calls a blue ball, and the Blue Devils have another chance. And we Jalise Wilson. Sends it in the middle for Marley Duggan. Duggan has her beat, pulls it back, but it's cleared outside the 18. Well done by Wilson to keep it in. Oh, and a handball. Tough call there. Uh, looked to me like there's nothing she could have done about that. Hand was up, bounced off her body. That's, that's one of those tough calls when it comes to uh, playing the ball. Sent up. Here's Millet. Davis. Now it's cleared. Here's Corcoran. Corcoran sends it downfield. It's over the head of Kelly. And here's Barron. Barron's got two in the middle. She's got Duggan and Brooks crossed in. Well done by Shanks to handle that low, uh, swirling shot. MRH really putting on some pressure here. Soccer being such a mental mental game, uh, we're surprised to see MRH taking the momentum, especially right after a collegiate goal. They've been using their speed and skill on the wings to attack there. But now collegiate looking to respond, trying to send Millet, but Caleb Brooks bringing it out. Tries to send it wide, but Yudego steps in the way. Sends it in the middle of the millet. Sends it behind Wangia. And it's picked up by Jalise Wilson. Can't keep it away. Here's Wangia, who sent it in the middle. Cleared away resoundingly by Caleb Brooks. And that'll be a collegiate throw. Six and a half minutes remain in the first half here at MRH High School. Still one nothing collegiate. Throw down the line. Linden chasing. Ricochet is off the leg of Jaleese Wilson. Collegiate throw.
Here's Wangia. Trying to take it to the byline. Looks like it is off. Looked like it was off the leg of Brooks, but they say it bounced once again off the leg of Wangia, and that will be a goal kick. It looks like we'll see the freshman Wilson taking this kick. The run up. Well done. Good ball. Finds Brooks. Brooks flicks it on for Mariah Davis. Davis brings it down nicely and beats her man. Oh, but scuffs the ground on that through ball attempt. And now they've got a counterattack. Here's Secret Yudego coming in on the near side. Yudego gets her pocket picked by Kayla Brooks, and it's sent out of bounds. Well done by Brooks. Yudego had acres of open space, but Brooks quickly closed down the gap and sent the ball out, averting the danger. We've got a substitution. Avery Vance will come in for bots and will take the throw. Brooks and Barron are standing. They're marked one on one. If they can get a quick clearance here, they could have the counterattack could be on. They do so, but it's cleared back in by Amelia Smith. Crossed by Yadego. Rolls through on the other side of the six. Here's Linden. Tries to send it back to the top of the box but nothing doing. Here's Chloe Roy, down the line for Linden. Linden left footed cross is low, off the foot of Wilson, kept in by Brooks. Saves the corner, gives up the throw. A pretty good game overall so far from Collegiate. We've seen some outstanding performances with Viviette Linden. Uh, Seamrit Yadego with a great game, and obviously Sifo Wengio with the nice goal. And we've got a substitution. We looks like we will see Barron head back to the back line as Brooke, uh, Kayla Brooks is coming up a bit lame here. Here's Wangia, pulls it back to the top of the box. Linden beats her man, sends in the cross. Rolls by Millet. Here's Yadego. Yadego looking to turn and shoot, but Corcoran gets in the way and pokes it wide. Corcoran heard a try chasing. Corcoran can't keep it in, but some good defending to keep Yadego from turning and having that shot. It's sent in. Baron steps and clears. Now Davis. Davis has Brooks wide open on the near side, but can't come up with it. Here's Millet. Taps it back. It's blocked. The shot from Roy. Now sent in. Here's Vangia. Wengia flicks it back for Millet. We'll bring it down, top of the D. Shooting, swing and miss from Barron, but it rolls safely into the waiting arms of goalkeeper Addie Nevins. Sent, it's long, and it bounces by Smith, and here's Lexi Brooks coming with pace. She's right on Smith's back, and she might win the ball here. It's down in the corner, and here's Lexi Brooks. Brooks comes up with it, sends it back for Duggan. Duggan able to keep it in. Sends it in the middle. Here's Meg Hofer. Oh, but can't bring it down. And the Owls look to respond quickly. But Barron, good touch to win that ball. Sends it in, but Kelly picks it off and sends a floating ball out of bounds. Here's Wilson. Wilson sends Duggan. Duggan chasing against Kelly. Jamila Kelly. Nice job. Keep that ball away. But here's Kiernan. Now Munn. Munn, nice pass to Hofer. Shot on. And it's oh. just wide. Oh. My depth perception failed me that time. Oh, man. Touched away by Daisha Shanks. And it's a corner for the Blue Devils with just two minutes left to go. <laughs> Katie Corcoran, set piece specialist, will take the corner from the far side. Corner does never never came into play, and that will be a collegiate goal kick. Wonderful attempt from Meg Hofer there, the left foot a curling effort from about 25 yards out. Took a nice save from Shanks to divert that one wide. With the seconds winding down in the first half, we can tell this game has absolutely lived in the upper third for both teams. Fast breaks and um, shots from the top of the 18 have really ruled this game, and. It's definitely been a sight to see. 
Yeah, we haven't seen much work in the middle third for either side. Um, Hofer and Veradachari might have been a really good matchup in the midfield, but we've seen a lot of play on the wings and, like Drew said, in the final third of each team. Now Wangia flicks it on. Here's Yadego. Yadego looking to beat Armstrong, but she'll play it in the touch. And Armstrong, she's got space, so she takes it quickly. Armstrong finds Corcoran. The touch isn't quite there, and it ends up back with Yadego. Poked away, though, by Corcoran. And Corcoran wins it off for Adachari, but Vance able to step in. Keeps Lexi Brooks from perhaps being in on goal. We're under a minute to go. Armstrong steps over the line. Unfortunate error there. That could have been a quick counter. But now with 30 seconds left, Owls will look to make the last attack of the half. Here's Yadego with Corcoran on her. Corcoran wins it nicely, but it ends up on the foot of Radachari, who will send it in. Barron, left footed clearance, sent back in by Yadego, out of bounds. 30 seconds left. We might just be running out of time here. Track athlete Anthony Brash throws the ball in to Armstrong. And it's sent out. We have tw less than 20 seconds to go. It'll have to be quick if anything's to happen. Here's Armstrong. Takes the throw quickly. Sends Brooks. It's in the middle. Here's Roy. We'll set it down for Longia. With seven seconds left, she might have a shot. Takes it to the 18. Loses the touch. Nevins ends up on top of it. And that will be halftime. With the first half ending, um, we've definitely seen a, a rough game for MRH. Obviously, they've had their chances, but an unlucky goal um, with a defensive blunder cost them that goal. Definitely been seeing a lack of passing back and regrouping from MRH. Definitely just trying to get up the field. Anything you've seen or any coaches or any coaching changes Jordan would like to make going into the second half? Well, uh, in my opinion, the, some of the best work that the Blue Devils had in this half came when Catherine Barron was playing up top. She obviously adds a whole lot on the defensive end. She's very solid back there. Uh, never, never seems to put a foot wrong, but her skill up top and her vision is something that not a lot of people have. And I think that she really unlocked a different gear for the Blue Devils when she was sent up to play a bit of forward. And I wouldn't mind seeing her back up there again to start the second half. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. She was making some great plays and some great runs running all the way back from her goal box all the way up to the half line to make a pass up. Um, hopefully we can see some of that. Um, we'll be taking a break for the rest of the ha halftime, and we'll see you back at the beginning of the second half.
Welcome back to the girls' soccer game between MRH and the Collegiate Owls. I'm Drew Moylan, a sophomore, and with me is Jackson Corker, a senior. Kickoff will be happening in just a few seconds here. A few players tying their shoes and just getting ready for the half. Uh, I'm sure the ref will start it very shortly. And the ref getting ready to blow the whistle. And we'll have a kickoff for MRH. Kicking it all the way up the field back to Amelia Smith. Ooh, and Anamon Carsonson and Smith in a bit of an altercation here, but ball is sent back to Catherine Barron and gets it out of danger for Olivia Armstrong who tries to send it up for Brooks but a little bit too high and Smith will be there to scoop that up and get rid of it. Smith tries to send it up. Olivia Armstrong will not allow that. Kicks it out for premier ball boy Anthony Brash. And Kelly with a nice throw in. Corcoran tries to block that with her head. Gets to Armstrong and Katie Corcoran with a great ball into the middle and Barron seems to be playing out the top this half oh never mind Marley Duggan my apologies <laughs> um, the ball is sent to the middle Katie Corcoran coming in from the wing gets control of it tries to hit that to Mariah Davis but it's scooped up by Collegiate and Katie Corcoran will get it back this time her ball goes to Lexi Brooks who takes the first touch tries to get it over to the left side but it is scooped up um, Davis goes for that unable to get there Ball is hit out by Collegiate. We'll be seeing an MRH throw in. Jaleese Wilson with the throw in, the freshman who's had a great season so far. Duggan tries to fight for that until it's ultimately grabbed by Davis. Davis trying to get the ball there from the Collegiate right back. Yeah, just go for it. Uh, with Wilson playing left back in this half, uh, I think a great analog for her performance thus far this season. Uh, is Anthony Brash. I don't know if you if you ever watched uh, the boys' soccer team, you'll know Anthony played left or right back, and he just never seemed to put a foot wrong. He always seemed to be in the right place, always seemed to have great hustle, great speed. Uh, and Wilson's been doing much of the same in her time uh, as a fullback. She's been doing a great job, and she's back there to start this half. Yeah, absolutely. Similarly, Lexi Brooks is very reminiscent of Jake Miller, the star striker for MRH. Um, over the fall season until he was injured. She's got the speed, she's got the great shot, and she's had a lot of goals so far, and hopefully we can see her put one in today. Barron takes it down the right wing with a battle, and ultimately she can hit that up, but it is grabbed by Amelia Smith, puts that out to the left back for Collegiate. Katie Corcoran battling for it, and it's knocked out, and Olivia Armstrong will take another throw. Armstrong taking the throw in over Corcoran's head to Brooks, and that'll be hit up by Kelly. Another MRH throw in here. I'd imagine Armstrong will take that again. Yes, she will. Corcoran going into the middle. Brooks staying out on the wing. Armstrong elects to hit that to Corcoran. It's hit back to Hofer, back to Corcoran, and ultimately hit out to the midfield for Collegiate. Collegiate with two runners with absolutely nobody marking them. The ball's hit past Catherine Barron. This will be a race of, of, and never mind, Catherine Barron's won that. Battling there, Catherine Barron has done a great job of taking the ball out on the um, on the on her third of the field. Apologies. Uh, she's very assured uh, with her when she's facing goal. Uh, she's not prone to mistakes, and even when she's got someone right on her back and she's headed towards her own net, uh, she's not. She doesn't hurry, she doesn't rush. She just does, does the job, does what she needs to do. And as we have what I believe is Collegiate's first corner of the night, that'll be Linden to take. Yeah, absolutely, I would agree with that. Composure is something that the less seasoned freshmen and sophomores, which are very abundant on this team, lack. And now we've got a Collegiate corner. That'll be Yadego passing it back out to the wing. And Yadego gets that ball again with two defenders on her, and that's scooped up by Meg Hofer.
now on the left wing, Marley Duggan goes for that, but she's unable to, and there'll be a throw-in for Collegiate. Yadega, who's had a great game so far, especially physically, really using her body to shield the ball. And it, she's right, wide open right now. Coverage on the, on the wings for MRH has been pretty poor, and I think that's really um, one of the major factors as to why this game has been so prominent on the wings. Just coverage has been lacking. Now Duggan once again tries to hit that back to her defender, unable to, and Davis will get rid of that, and we'll have an MRH thrown. Jackson, have you noticed any changes in MRH or Collegiate's play so far from the first half? I mean, not really. Both sides have been looking to play predominantly through the wing. We haven't seen a lot of play from the center midfielders on either side, and that has continued here in the second half. Um, not a lot of and not a lot of build-up play, not a lot of build-up in possession. Uh, we've been, they've been looking to find the winger and let the winger run. And once again, that has continued through the first five minutes here in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. I think one big factor of that is this MRH team is just so young. Only two seniors, the co-captains, Catherine Barron and Olivia Armstrong, and a few juniors sprinkled throughout the roster. But this roster is predominantly sophomores and freshmen. And I think the confidence and the ball control have, are really not there yet for them. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what you brought up earlier, composure, is definitely a huge factor. In varsity sports, especially soccer, uh, where you got action every single minute of the game, composure is a huge, huge part of how well you play. And that can only come with time. And um, it's through no fault of their own, these younger players simply don't have the experience to build that composure. Yeah, definitely. Soccer is a game full of mistakes. And um, a lot of younger players, when they make a mistake, they really knock themselves down over it and they need to have the memory of a goldfish forget about it and get back into the game and I think that's something we've noticed especially with Catherine Barron who really does not um, worry about her mistakes and plays confidently and that composure is going to be a big factor. Now a battle in the midfield between Mariah Davis and the collegiate center mid Amelia Smith will hit that all the way up and that'll be grabbed by MRH but Meg Hofer will win that eventually in the midfield. Tries to hit it out to the wing, but unfortunately Kelly, unfortunately for her, Kelly grabs that. A ball hit over Brooks' head, and unfortunately um, for her, once again, that'll be a throw-in for Kelly. Now Kelly battling with Hofer in the midfield. And Davis gets that up. Jackson, Mariah Davis and Marley Duggan, both freshmen, have played nearly the entire game. Any thoughts on their performance so far? Um, I thought Mariah Davis has been a fantastic. Uh, she's playing sort of a stopper defensive midfield role in the Blue Devils 4-3-3, and I think she's done fantastically. She stepped into the midfield when she's needed to, but she is a secure force at center back when she drops back. Um, she's done really well. She's got a strong left foot. Uh, and she is very confident winning the ball out of the air, which is huge since that's sort of a skill a lot of these younger players do end up lacking. Yeah, absolutely. And her near screamer of a shot on the top of the box in the first half was a sight to see. And now Lexi Brooks gets the ball at the top of the 18, tries to hit that out to Ellen Powell, I believe. Um, unfortunately, oh, never mind. Lexi Brooks gets that, tries to take a shot, ends up being a cross. Marley Duggan, the freshman, goes for that. She's got Katie Corcoran on the wing. Katie tries to make a cross, ends up hitting it back to Duggan, tries to keep that in, but that'll end up being a goal kick for Collegiate. Never mind, that was offside. And once again, um, a free kick for Collegiate. Surveying the field, trying to figure out where to put it. Tries to hit one of her CDMs, but Mariah Davis once again is there to grab that. Battle in the midfield, won by MRH. Sees Lexi Brooks, but opts to go for the striker. Mariah Davis goes for that, unable to grab that. Katie Corcoran, in a pace battle, which we've seen so much during this game, wins that, but just hits it out to stay safe. That was a great show of composure there from Katie Corcoran in a tough situation with somebody bigger and faster than her and was definitely able to capitalize on that. Uh, Corcoran has played one of the best defensive games I've seen her play yet this season or maybe her career. 
Um, like, like Drew said, she's been really composed. She has been more than willing to get into physical battles, uh, win 50-50 balls, which she had some struggles with in the past. But she's played very well today, uh, but she unfortunately gets beaten there on a tough bounce. And that will, but that will end up being a Blue Devil throw. Yeah, Corcoran being your sister, some family ties. You really know her game, and I think it's good to see your sister having a good game so far. Now Catherine Barron grabbing the ball all the way on the wing, being pressured, opts to hit it out, um, was not hit off of a collegiate player. We're going to see a throw-in from, from, throw from Kelly, and that'll be a substitution for collegiate. Um, anything you know about the in incoming player for collegiate, Jackson? Uh, that's Avery Vance, who played mostly at right back in the collegiate 4-4-2 in the first half. Um, she was she showed a clear propensity to just get the ball off her foot. She didn't seem very comfortable with the ball, but she ha she had a good sense of uh, when to step in, when to make a tackle. Played a pretty solid first half, and it looks like she's coming in to play a similar position that she started with. Yeah, thank you for that, Jackson. Um, we have a goal kick, or we had a goal kick. Addie Nevins opted not to take that. Jaleese Wilson tried to hit it all the way up to the midfield. Unfortunately, it was a little bit short, and now there's a throw-in for MRH. Blocked back out to MRH a, a few yards up from the last one, and now we'll see a substitution. Once again, Jackson, you got anything on this? Uh, well, this is a Hala Kiernan coming in, and uh, Kiernan... Uh, number 15, a freshman. She's just an absolute workhorse. Um, you see, she played basketball, and the way she plays basketball and soccer is exactly the same. She will just come at you and come at you and come at you, and she will not stop. She, she is just a pest on the wing, where if she goes, oh, and here's, I'm on a run, but nothing comes of that chance. But she is a pest on the wing and on the court. She will just come at you until you lose the ball, until it ends up on her foot. Uh, and that's the, the great player to have on your bench. Yeah, definitely. Being only a freshman, we can see that play style blossom into something a lot better, especially when she's a junior or a senior with um, the physicality and the confidence going up. And maybe one day she'll be the star. We'll have to see. A battle in the top third of MRH's field. One, I'm not sure. We'll have a throw-in. Seems to be a collegiate throw-in. Yes, a collegiate throw-in. Not too many open players. Ops to go over the head will not work for her. Catherine Barron is quick to grab that. Back to Mariah Davis. Tries to hit that out to the wing. It's not going to work for her. A run coming from Longia, who's already scored once. Very tall. Beats Olivia Armstrong with the shot. A beautiful save by Addie Nevins. Really showing how good her positioning is. Um, last week against Bayless, she had some issues with positioning. Some long balls. Um, went past her, and she really kept her composure there, stayed back in her box knowing that the shot would come in, and grabbed that and was able to make the most of it. Uh, just about my only area of expertise with regards to soccer is goalkeeping, and with that one I can tell you that is a fantastic save. And that, it, like Drew said, that is all positioning. Um, it may not look like most looks like she just reached up, but that is a really tough save to make because you had to be in just the right spot, and she was. Very smart play from Nevins and reacted well to keep that one out of the net. Yeah, absolutely. Nevin's keeping the Blue Devils in this game right now. A 1-0 close game like this, another goal for Collegiate could really spell disaster for MRH um, with such tight defense from Collegiate. Now we're seeing Anamon Carsonson picking up the ball on the wing, tries to hit that up, unable to do so. And now we've got Juan Guilla making a run. The player Alexa hit it out to the wing. Too much on that. Now we've got an MRH throw-in. Coach Spinks of the track team gives that on over to Maplewood, and we've got Jaleese Wilson for the throw-in now. Not a lot of players checking in and out for MRH. They don't seem to have a very dynamic um, throw-in strategy, really just trying to have some player open. And that ball goes right back out for another MRH throw-in by Wilson. Not too many opportunities here on the throw-in. Definitely a big issue for MRH. So many throw-ins they've had so far. Not been able to really capitalize on any of them. Anything they could do to improve that, Jackson? Uh, well, there has to be motion on the throw-in. Um, you have to show either show to the ball or make a run. 
and Blue Devils are kind of pretty static on their throwing routine, like you said, Drew. And there, there needs to be move, and there needs to be some impetus to get the ball moving. Otherwise, you end up throwing it right into the shins of an opposing player. Yeah, absolutely, Jackson, with that AP vocabulary. Um, they've had so many throw-ins. Um, you'd really think that they would start to change something up, but um, unfortunately not. Now we've got a great ball trying to be hit up to Wangia, but Nevins picks that up. Nevins has had a very solid game so far. That one goal by Wangia was would have been impossible, near impossible for her to save, so really can't blame her for that. We missed a substitution. I believe that's... Yeah, Anya Kondra, the freshman, up in the midfield right now going for the ball, and also Lily Watkins has gone on. We've got Kiernan on the wing trying to pick the ball up. We seem to have an injury. Lexi Brooks down. With her speed, it's so hard to not get fouled. And now... Anya? It's Anya Kondra. 100% sure. It doesn't matter. I used to call her Anja Kondra. No, bro, I literally used to hang out with her three years ago. I'm sure her name. Uh, tough to see Lexi Brooks on the ground. Uh, she, uh, looks like the trainer is out there tending to her. Hopefully she's okay. Went down hard off a tough tackle from a collegiate midfielder. Um, she, she does tend to go down quite a lot. It, it is tough with that speed to stay up. And when you're, when you're going at that speed, you do tend to go down harder. Um, but she's up. She'll be walking off the field, and hopefully she'll be back on uh, in little no time. Yeah, and as she walks off, we'd just like to apologize if there was any commentary you heard. We've had some technical issues in the box by um, Seppi Marino, and um, so um, thank you to him for helping out, but um, let's just get back to the game. Oh, but, and while we do have a bit of time here, we would like to thank our Staff up here in the booth, uh, we have Mr. David Ganey running the scoreboard. We have Brett Bowen, Jacob McBride, and Seppi Marino doing a great job back there on the ones and twos. Also, Mr. Sassel, the sponsor of the broadcasting team, not in the room right now, but he's done so much for this team with so many people um, not showing up for his, um, for our club, I should say. Um, he's really done a great job of keeping it together, and hopefully we can keep this club for next year, so a shameless plug, um, if you're an MRH student, Please come to the broadcast club. We have no members. And now we've got a seemingly a drop ball. Unclear. I'd imagine so as there's no foul on Lexi Brooks. Lexi and Kayla, her sister, have both been getting injured a lot as their pace is, um, and height are really hard to not be fouled. Yeah, and a drop ball, one by MRH. Tries to put that into the middle, and now we'll see it won by MRH by Jalise Wilson. Hits it up to Katie Corcoran. Katie Corcoran with a nice ball. Anya Conjure, who's just come on, goes for that. Unable to. Won by Collegiate. Hits that out for, I believe, an MRH corner. Yeah, absolutely, an MRH corner. A great play by Katie Corcoran, putting that ball into the box. Conjure unable to capitalize. Once again, what we've mentioned so many times, the composure piece, when you're up in that final 18, and you realize you can really get a goal, um, the pressure really starts to run high, and I think that's what we saw here from Anya Kondra. And now a corner. Katie Corcoran with that corner. Ooh, uh, a shot. Unmarked player for MRH. Tries to hit that at Daisha Shanks, but goes right to her, unfortunately, and she scoops that up for a goal kick. Weak goal kick. Picked up by MRH. Meg Hofer with a shot. A great idea. Execution, not so much, and it's grabbed by Daisha Shanks. Daisha opts for the throw-in now after a rough 
um, punt and Corcoran pressuring. Corcoran pressuring Linden. Hits that out for a Kelly throw-in. Now we've got a substitution for Collegiate. Um, I believe that is Secret Yadego going on. Unsure if who's going off. Um, apologies for that. Now we've got Katie Corcoran with the ball. One by Lily Watkins, who's just come on for the first time in the game. And Marley Duggan, the freshman, tries to carry that ball, but unable to. And now one in the midfield by Meg Hover, who's had a great game so far. Olivia Armstrong tries to get that to Condra. Condra wins that. A little bit of a miscommunication. And that'll be hit out of danger by Collegiate. Some great dribbling there. Up to Yadego. Yadego with a nice ball. Wangia with a breakaway. Nevins tries to come out, but that will be a goal from Wangia. Her second in the game, and Nevins puts her hands up, seemingly calling for a foul or possibly an injured player. Olivia Armstrong, the captain, went down on there. A tough challenge. Both of them going to the ball. Unsure of really what happened there. That happened in a blur. Nevins calling out her coach. This seems to be serious. Injury seems to be more serious than we first expected from Olivia Armstrong. Both coaches out from MRH checking on her to see if she's okay. Seemed to have took a rough fall and then landed awkwardly. Um, Jackson mentioned that she might be holding her knee. Let's hope she's okay because this could really be a serious injury if I'm lucky. Yeah, they seem to be examining her leg. I think she did take an awkward fall. And on a field with so much character, that can really be s serious. Now being carried off the field with a respectful round of applause. MRH will regroup, unfortunately, without their co-captain and one of their strongest defenders. Armstrong seems to have been replaced by Mariah Davis. And off the kick for Meg Hover, kind of just throws it up there. MRH seems to have lost a little bit of their intensity. Now Katie Corcoran in a battle once again on the wing. Doesn't have to do anything, and that'll be lost. Oh, and now a big kick from Collegiate goes up to 
Baron who is able to hit that out. We've got a throw in here once again from Collegiate. Hits that to Wangia, who's had two goals so far in a great game. Tries to aim that at Yadego, and Yadego almost gets that now. Collegiate with a chance. Unable to capitalize on that. Back out to the midfield. And a weak shot dribbles right into Addie Nevin's hands. And she'll take that down to the right. Has Katie Corcoran and Marley Duggan showing for her. Ops will go for Anamon Carsonson in the middle. Ooh, Anna with a great turn. Ends up losing it, though. And now have Mariah Davis with a great header. But Yadega was strong and keeps that. Baron says no and gets rid of that. Anya Kondra fighting for the ball up in midfield. Loses it, and once again, the ball will go right back to Addie Nevins. Jackson, have you noticed a change in atmosphere since the injury and just an overall tempo of the game? I mean, it is very hard to continue play after an injury, especially one that appears to be serious. And it is, uh, like Drew said, it's hard to keep up your momentum as Kluge comes in, but it's handled nicely by Nevins. It is really hard to pick yourself up um, and continue play after something like that. Because you're, I mean, your main focus is hoping that your teammate is okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Paired with a goal, it's really not fun for the team. And... Like I said in the first half, mentality is such an important part of soccer, and one person getting down can really affect the whole team and um, their tempo of play. And a throw in from Collegiate, tries to get that to Secret Yadego. Catherine Barron clears it, um, something that's happened so many times in this game. Um, Secret Yadego and Catherine Barron fighting for the ball. Catherine Barron usually ends up clearing that out, and now we'll see another throw in from Collegiate opts to let that go all the way, Baron does, for the goal kick for Addie Nevins. Addie switches it quickly. Collegiate is shifting. Corcoran's still open. So is Anima and Carsonson all the way up there. Wilson opts to go for Carsonson a little bit short, closer to Lily Watkins, who misjudges that. And now we'll have another chance for Collegiate. Ooh, tries to get to that, that to Wangia. Manages to keep it in on the line. Has a trail. Looks for the pass to Yadego. One by um, Davis. Now Wilson clears it out after Wangia has a chance for a hat trick. Now Marley Duggan, the freshman, puts that into the middle. And Jaleese Wilson clears that out once again. Ball control has seemed to go out the window for both teams. So many balls in the air and a lot of throw-ins. I'm assuming the weather could be a factor in this. And both teams have had quite a few games in the last few weeks. This last half can be very tiring for them. And I'd imagine their legs are very tired. Wilson opts to step back for that clear as Wangia was not putting enough pressure on her. Ended up working out. That'll be an MRH throw-in and she'll be taking that one. Tries to hit... I'm unsure of who she was going to hit there for, but it was a misfire, and that'll be one for Collegiate in the midfield. Looking at the wing, Zahaba. Kiernan tries to get that, and she will. Puts it back to Baron, takes it out to the corner flag, and clears that to Anya Kondra. <coughs> Anya Kondra so far has had a f quite a few opportunities, unable to make much out of them, but she has. Definitely been in the right spot, and her positioning has been pretty good so far. Once again, Condra with a chance. Now carrying it. Just her. Ooh. With Carsonson, only one defender. Ops to dribble and loses it. Once again, a good opportunity from her. Jalise Wilson beats Wangia to the ball. Tries to clear it out, unable to. Lily Watkins running for that. Not fast enough. Collegiate is a very fast team, and it's really played into their favor so far. Ball sent to Wangia, and that'll be offside. I think this is the second offside call of the game. Both teams have done a pretty good job of staying diligent up there, and obviously that's evident as uh, Collegiate has two goals. But that also comes a little bit from neither side being very willing to push up their defensive line too far. 
Uh, both sides are pretty wary of the other's speed. They don't want to put give space in between the 18 and the defensive line. So that side really playing an offside trap style of defense, sitting back waiting for the ball to come to them. Yeah, that is a good point. Um, also, you noted the offside trap defense. They, I would agree with the positioning and looking that way, but they really have not tried to play into that. I'm not sure if um, the coach really wants to go into such um, serious tacticality and really wants to focus more on their physicality, as that is physicality and pace, as that really is their strong suit. Um, but yeah, I would absolutely agree. There's been a lack of creativity and confidence in this game. A lot of just staying safe, trying to clear the ball out, and simple passes. Simple passes are obviously beneficial, but without creativity, it's hard to find goals. And an MRH throw in this time, ooh, Carsonson takes a kick to the stomach. Another in injury to MRH within a span of about five minutes. Trying to go for the ball there, um, I believe that was Kelly, ends up going straight for Carstensen's stomach. Gets back up and seems to be okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's clear that there's not the type of physicality or ill will that might be present in a conference game, a Bayless, Brentwood, etc. But um, there has still been some physicality from the collegiate side and has led to some tough breaks for Blue Devils. But clearly no intent in that or anything else has really happened today. Yeah, definitely. The intensity is really not there for either team. Collegiate has had some pressure, but Emmerich seems to be playing kind of flat. A drop ball once again. Wilson opts to put that up. Wangia wins that. Tries to get to Kelly. Unable to. And Hofer, with a great play, tries to carry it up. Will lose it. Corcoran with a deflected pass. Almost to Carsonson, but one. is Now a great run from Collegiate. She's got two players up in the middle and one on the wing. Ooh, offs to dribble. Almost lost it to Wilson, but Barron is able to keep that. Barron with a little one-two play with Lily Watkins. Now Collegiate, there's no coverage in the midfield for MRH. And now a battle in the wing. Kieran, with that speed, tries to beat Yadego. Back to Yadego once again. Goes for the cross. Juan Gia with the deflected shot. And now we'll see a goal kick for MRH. Now two more substitutions. Um, one for each team. Jackson, you got anything on these? Uh, Jordan Phipps, freshman coming in to play, uh, looks like center forward. Um, like a lot of these young players, she does have a lot of pace up there, but um, she is lacking some of the seasoning that will come with playing some more games. The left foot a corner in from Linden, I believe that is, and she'll try again. Sends a curling ball, head of the way by Hofer. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with you that we've been talking about that a lot, the confidence and the experience from um, pl all of the players alike. And I think with such a young team, getting experience for the players early is so instrumental. And in seasons to come, I think we'll definitely be seeing a very strong MRH team. Now Davis tries to play to the um, newly subbed on Phipps. Kept tried to play to Anya Kondra. Once again, it's definitely had some great positioning by Anya Kondra, getting open right place at the right time and once again play to Anya Kondra this time she's covered unable to get there now one by Davis Davis tries to get rid of it goes down comes right back up Corcoran wins the ball gets a little bit eager there plays it up and that'll be grabbed by Amelia Smith for collegiate and then Mariah Davis opts to bomb it up to Marley Duggan kept well Katie Corcoran with a great run down the wing, but that'll be deflected. Referee getting in the way a little bit. And now we'll have Marley Duggan with a foot race, but that'll be picked up by Shanks. Uh, that was a very nice play, interplay from Duggan and Corcoran. That's one of Duggan's real strengths. Um, she, as a, as a forward, she's great at hold-up play. Um, not necessarily a pure striker, in the sad sense of the word. And now, Wangia with a nice pass to Yadego ends up getting deflected, goes to her on the wing. And that'll be cleared out. Now back to what you were saying, Jackson. Oh, never mind. We have another chance from Collegiate here. Katie Corcoran with the great pressure. Tries to win that ball. Unable to. Cuts her attacker off. 
Once again, playing great defense. Now, Lily Watkins tries to get there. Ooh, tries to send it up, but there's nobody up there. Phipps going for that. And now we have Katie Corcoran with another battle on the wing. This time wins it. Deflected to Meg Hofer. Ooh, a great ball by Meg Hofer. Marley Duggan goes for that. Katie Corcoran marking the passing lane. Hits that out, and we'll have an... Uh, cl I'm not sure. An MRH throwing, I guess. That was a while ago. What I was saying about uh, Duggan, she is really good at holding up the ball and looking for options uh, as a striker. You don't always want to just be heading towards goal. Uh, facilitating as a striker with your back to goal is actually a really big part of the job, and Duggan is very good at that. Yeah, I think that's definitely a reason why Coach Jordan has been playing her so much. And ooh, now a chance from MRH. Conjure tries to battle for it, but just not fast enough. This collegiate team has a lot of pace all throughout the team. And while MRH has some players that are very fast, um, especially in the midfield, they're no match for collegiate speed. And now Davis with the throw-in tries to get that to Conjure. Conjure wins that, plays it through to herself, tries to win that, unable to, and clear back out to the MRH bench. Um, and then we'll have another Mariah Davis throw-in. Mariah Davis has been taking a lot of throw-ins recently, just this half, and she seemed to be doing a great job of them, really finding an open player, and once again does that with Condra. And that'll be cleared out, but Lily Watkins will stop that, tries to play it up to Phipps, that'll be lost. And now we've got Yadega with a, in a one-on-one in -on -one situation, loses the ball, great defensive play. Barron with a nice pass, tries to hit a forward, nobody there. Watkins once again going for it. Missed by Phipps, Condra, some 50-50 plays. Watkins hits it on the head of a collegiate player. And now Condra racing for it. Out to the wing. Wilson running up with it. Now in the box. Kiernan, apologies. Ooh, tries to get the cross in. Ball was already too close to the goal and wasn't able to get the mo most of her opportunity. Uh, some of the best chances and one of my favorite bits of play in any soccer game is when uh, Blue Devils have been getting down on the byline and looking for the drag back because they have had runners heading into the middle of the box, even up to the six-yard line, um, but they just haven't been able to convert some, some good job tracking back by the uh, Owls center backs for the most part on those type of plays. Yeah, absolutely. Ten minutes remaining in this 80-minute tough match between the Owls and Blue Devils. Owls so far with a 2-0 lead. Wangia scoring both of the goals for Collegiate. And now we'll have another battle in the midfield. Kiernan attempts to get there. It'll deflect off of her and out for a throw-in. And Bots will take a throw-in. That is a great throw-in. Yudego goes for that, gives up. Um, and now we'll have Condra running onto that. We'll be unable to get there. Amelia Smith from Collegiate has some great positioning and is able to get rid of that. Apologies, Lily Wamhoff. And now Shanks will come out of her box to grab that ball. Condra also racing for it. A great chance to regroup for Collegiate, getting their shape back. And Deisha Shanks takes her time. Hits the punt into the midfield. Hofer tries to head that, and we have a whistle from the referee. I'm assuming a foul on that head ball play or a handball. Unsure, but we do have a Collegiate free kick. Uh, Daisha Shanks, despite not being tested extremely toughly thus far, she's been really, really solid back there for the Owls thus far. Uh, pretty Seems like a pretty intelligent goalkeeper, good positioning, and she's dealt well with all the balls that have come into her box. Yeah, absolutely. On a field with so many flaws and a game with um, rough weather, the goalie always has to be sharp, and I think Shanks has done a great job of that so far, uh, as you said, despite being not tested too, mo too hard. And now Baron, ooh, in a battle in the ba in the box with Millet, and she will miss that, and we'll have Nevins once again switching fields for the goal kick. Jackson, could you explain to us a little bit about why the Blue Devils are switching sides in these goal kicks? Well, uh, when you're taking a goal kick, you usually end up with the side you feel, one, more confident taking it on. I know from my experience taking goal kicks, usually on this field, you find a tuft of grass that you can set the ball up on, and you send it from there. So it is very well possible that uh, Jalice and Addy have found a, a piece of grass that they can set the ball on and kick the ball most effectively. 
but it also might be because that's where they trust the players to come down with the ball most. Um, they do usually have Hofer and Corcoran on that side, two of the better touches on the team, and that may be uh, one of the causes that ends up with them switching the ball so often. Yeah, definitely. And also, we've missed a substitution for MRH. Jada Hodge, the freshman for Maplewood, coming on for her first time of the game. And Mariah Bowen as well. And also, Mariah Bowen has come on. Playing left wing, Mariah Bullen has some serious height on her, over six feet tall as a freshman. Um, if she can get up there in the box, head balls will be free for her. And now we've got a throw in for Kelly. Kelly, not enough players open for her. Hofer tries to play that up to Conjure, but just not in the right position for that. And now we've got Davis trying to win there with off secret Yadego is able to. But Yadego picks that ball back up, races past Davis. Barron there to defend her. Oh, yes. Barron with some great defending, which she's done so much of this game. Ooh. Beats Yadego. Once again, gets that back to Davis, who clears that out. And conjures so much space with Jordan Phipps and Mariah Bullen running up with her. Ooh, and Bullen, Bullen unable to get there. A great clearance and some great positioning by the Blue Devils. Had so much space. Catherine Barron has some real audacity as a sweeper. Uh, hit a little nutmeg in the corner back there. You don't see that very often from a center back. Yeah, absolutely. Some Maldini-esque play from Barron with being a very dribbling-based um, center back, and I think that's worked out for her well. And now Hodge with a chance at the top of the box, unable to capitalize, tries to take the shot, but too much pressure on her, and that'll go straight to Shanks with an easy save. Shanks once again taking her time. Par partially running down the clock with six minutes left as she has the lead and also making sure her team um, is able to regroup. And now we've got Meg Hofer in the midfield once again. Meg Hofer's had a great game in the midfield, distributing the ball very well. And now we'll have Wilson running up for that. Wilson also having a great distributing game, hitting long balls up there. And now Corcoran away, runs up with the ball up the wing. And Smith hit the ball on her hand in the box. Ref did not see it or decided that that was natural position, and it'll be back to Hofer. Hofer takes it up to the top of the 18, is muscled off of the ball, and nobody there. And now MRH trying to defend the counterattack. Baron cuts that off, but Yadego beats her. Wangia also there with Yadego. Wangia tries to make the most of her situation, but Davis clears that out. But once again, no clearance for, no defense apologies for MRH on the wing. But Corcoran's able to get back there and clear that out for a collegiate throw on. Uh, that was a great bit of backtracking, great bit of covering from Mariah Davis there. Um, that is a veteran play from a young player. Uh, Barron was in a tough spot. The ball caromed off her leg. Wangia could have had a real chance, but Davis was able to track back, step in. Great job covering for her teammate. Yeah, absolutely. And although MRH is, is losing this game so far, I think it's a great learning experience playing a strong, fast, and seasoned team, really starting to understand some dynamics within the team. We've seen some great plays from Hofer and Corcoran, also the likes of Mariah Davis, Catherine Barron, and Jaleese Wilson, all really getting their team chemistry up, and I think this is a great test of their skills so far. And being such a young team, this is a result they cannot be too mad at. And now the scoreboard seems to be getting fixed. I'm assuming it was running down while play was stopped. And Mr. Ganey, our scoreboard expert, fixes that. Thank you so much, Mr. Ganey. And now we'll have Wangia trying to receive that throw in, but shut down by the much smaller Jaleesa Wilson. Now Jada Hodge and Jordan Phipps going for the ball. Ooh, Anya Condra tries to get the ball in the center circle. Whiffs on that. And now it'll be sent back to the MRH defensive line. A battle of four people, a human centipede of sorts, unable to really see what's going on. <laughs> and one by Condra. Condra had too many players on her, though, and it'll be picked up by Yadego. Yadego and Wangia have really been putting pressure on MRH offensively with their speed and their physicality, Jackson. Any notes on that? Uh, well, Rangia, who came into this game as collegiate leading scorer, does have a brace today. And, I mean, 
in terms of defensively handling her, you can't really be too upset despite that. Uh, she's a tough player to defend, but other than those two goals, she hasn't really had any opportunities. She's just made good on the one she has had, and you can't be too upset about that. Yeah, definitely. I believe we're going to see an MRH throw in now, um, once again from Jaleese Wilson. Jaleese Wilson taking a bulk of the throw ins on the right, and Mariah Davis on the left. Both pretty good at those. Corcoran battling on the wing, really getting in there. Ooh, slips on the ball there. And now Wangia will take that. Yadego in space sends it, opts to send it all the way over to the wing. A beautiful ball there. Mariah Davis trying to close some space, but is beat, tries to get it to Yadego, unable to. Catherine Barron grabs that ball. Now Anya Condra tries to take a touch out. Bullen with her. Anya Condra with a great run down the line. Phipps running in with her and Hodge in the middle of the field. And now someone has fallen. Once again, another human centipede going on here. We've seen a lot of that on the left side. Davis tries to win that, bombs it up. Phipps running onto that. Hodge hits that up. Amelia Smith very fast gets to there. Fast, ooh, never mind. Hodge grabs that. Hodge with a nice touch up the wing. Uh, nobody able to get there. And Smith will clear that out for a Katie Corcoran throw in. Meg Hofer wide open in the middle of the field. Has a nice first touch. Tries to hit that. Phipps with the ball. Falls on it. And that'll be a clearance from, I'm unsure. I believe that was Lily Wamhoff. That might have been Amelia Smith. Apologies. And now we've got a throw in for MRH. Meg Hofer tries to get a cross off. Daisha Shanks smart. Doesn't try to touch that and opts to take the goal kick. Two minutes left in this game now. Um, a comfortable lead for Collegiate. Very hard to mess up. They just need to take their time and play smart, and this game is all but over for them. MRH wants to get one goal in. Absolutely still can, but they got to play their best right now. Jalise Wilson has some space. Ball over Wangia. Meg Hofer in the middle. Isn't able to get there. And now on the left, Mariah Bowen with her first touch of the game. Loses that. Lily Watkins and Bowen try to get back. Bowen gets beat. Not fast enough for this fast collegiate team. Davis also beat. And that'll be a deflection off of Catherine Barron, I believe. Yeah, Catherine Barron. And we'll have a f corner kick for collegiate. I think only their second of the game. Third, apologies. And now Linden will be taking... The free kick for or the corner kick for collegiate. She's had one pretty good one so far. The other one was somewhat subpar. So, and yeah, once again, not the greatest corner kick from her. Can't be really mad at that. Last minute of the game, she'll be taking another one. Taking her time here. 50 seconds left. Clock is winding down. Coach Jordan has put on a lot of freshmen for this last part of the game. Knows that she probably isn't going to win this and wants to give them some experience. That seemed to be a handball in the box from MRH. Ref also doesn't call that. And now Anya Condra just has a one-on-one. -on -one. Phipps and Hodge up with her. Condra beats her, her man, which she's done so much. Ooh. Attempts to win against there, against her player. Is unable to, and that's cleared out for an MRH thrown with 20 seconds to go. MRH needs to hurry. They're not. All of their players are coming up. Baron opt to stay back with Wilson coming up. There's only 12 seconds. They really don't have time for all this dilly-dallying. Davis takes the kick, and that'll be safely kicked out by Collegiate. Meg Hover picks that up, and that will be game. And as the final three whistles go off, a resounding victory for Collegiate, 2-0 to MRH. This game could absolutely have been a higher margin. I think MRH did get lucky on some plays. They did get unlucky on a few attempts from Mariah Davis and Meg Hofer. But overall, I think Collegiate definitely dominated that game. Can't really be too devastated by that as MRH is once again a young team and didn't have a better record than Collegiate going into this game. Jackson, any closing thoughts? Uh, well, not too much. A uh, tough loss for the Blue Devils. Uh, they still are winless on their non conference season. That's tough to take. But they will be back in action very soon as they play tomorrow, I believe. Uh, they will be taking on some team which is Principia they will be heading to Principia to take on the Panthers 
uh, right back in action. Another non-conference. What? Uh, we are back on the air Monday where we take on Gateway Science Academy in what I believe is a rescheduling from what was supposed to be the season opener. Um, but I believe that will be all from us today. I've been Jackson Corcoran. I've been Drew Moylan, and thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.